That's a Nigerian based in Cape Town. Mm. He owns 800 RDP houses. Our people are paying rent to him. <laughs> now, you must tell me, what type of government do we have? There's others here. When I campaign, when, when you go to Terfontein, mm. our people are renting houses from Nigerians. What type of government do we have? But clearly that's a policing issue as well. No, it's a leadership issue. Uh. It's a leadership issue. If you are not leading for the police to do what's right, then we're going to have a problem. Yeah. I went with the, the MMC of Public Safety last week, Saturday, uh, to Hillbro and to uh, UV. Mm -hmm. People are renting from Nigerians. A guy said, there's a, there's a Congolese guy who comes here once a month to, to, to collect money for rent. <laughs> and at the back of that house, they're selling drugs. Sure. And you say, our government knows these hotspots. Nigerians are be complaining South Africa hate them. South Africa don't like them and South Africa too are be complaining about Nigerian. Nigerian don't like them and them they don't like Nigerians and Nigeria don't like them too but it's too. You see and again when you are in someone country and the person don't like you what is about to do? You go back to your country. Simple across ABC. I don't know what is the problem but today we have a lot of Nigerians and South Africa. Everybody respond to this issue. Watch the video you understand what I mean about Okay. Stay. I'm going to be listing some reasons why Nigerians come to South Africa. You will see a lot of Nigerians in South Africa. If they want to travel abroad, the first name they will call in South Africa. If you see a Nigerian person, where are you going? South Africa. And these South African people, they will say, go back to your country. Fix your country. Go back. We don't want you. We don't want you. So I'm going to be telling you the reason. There are just two major reasons. Why Nigerians come to South Africa? Why they leave their country to come to South Africa? Do you know the reason? You don't know it. It's only a Nigerian person that will tell you the reason why they come to South Africa. And just to, to you know I'm a Nigerian, right? So I'm going to be telling you the reason why Nigerians come to South Africa. You want to know about it, right? You keep, you guys say, go back home, fix your country. Le, 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 le. Let me tell you the reason. Do you want to know the reason why Nigerians come to South Africa is... You won't believe what happened to me today. If you are from South Africa, please watch this video. If you are not from South Africa, please, I encourage you to watch this video so that you can see what a South African sent me today. Watch this video. Today, I checked my email just to see if I had a breakthrough in my career only to find out that South Africans are breaking me through and through. Good evening. Please see attached. I, could, I couldn't send this to you via TikTok. So here it is. You can thank me later. Your fellow South African regards Carmen. Now let's zoom into what this lady sent me. You are cordially invited to the wedding ceremony of Osasio Cupcake and Pinky Pinky venue. South Africa. South Africa, this is what we are doing right now. You have graduated from commenting on my videos to going into my inbox to sending me Instagram message. Now you are emailing me. I'm going to tag Pinky Pinky in this video. Anissa Ndabulua, Anissa Ndabulua, Pinky Pinky, please, I need you to see what these people have done. How, How do you think of these things? I'm tired. Yo, guys, the insult is too much. Hey, what did I do to you guys? What did I do to you guys? As I'm talking, they are still, they are still pouring it out. What did I do to you guys? Hey, I said you guys were waiting for somebody to say that thing so that you can just vomit everything. The video did not even stay up to, it was not even up to 45 minutes. I've started seeing so many things, so many comments, so many things. They are saying what they want. Oh, drug trafficking. Oh, uh, human trafficking. Oh, scammers. Woo, woo, woo. They, a lot of them. So, oh, bad governance. Um, some said uh, hunger. Some said so many things. Like, you guys were just expecting me to, to, to post it so that you guys can say what is in your mind. Hey, even my friends, we're calling, say, Grace, are you fine? 
I'm fine. <laughs> they were calling me. Are you fine? Some of them, some of this, some of my friends, the South African ones, they were not telling me the meaning of what you guys were saying in the comment section. The meaning of them. I was like, eh? Why? The meaning was nothing to write home about. Hey! Oh, good evening. The truth is that I picked up from this thing, eh? It's the one that said that I'm also a scammer. <laughs> that I was not able to give the reason why Nigeria come to South Africa. And then the other person that said it's hunger. 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 Say it's because of hunger. A lot of you said so many things, so many interesting things. But really, <laughs> guys, if you guys see me, please just dash me money. Because you see the insult I received yesterday to today. As I'm talking to you guys, messages are coming. Comments from people. What did I do? What did I do? Eh? What did I do? Follow Grace Space on Facebook. Please follow Grace Space on Space. Eh? <laughs> I'm glad that Nigerian lady got exited from the competition. And here's why. Here is why. I have a lot of Nigerian clients. I have some Nigerian friends. I have no beef against Nigerians. Except for the fact that Nigerian people on TikTok are hella disrespectful to South Africans. Very, 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 very disrespectful to South Africans, bruh. Y'all try to steal I'm a piano, dog. I see it every other day on TikTok. I try to ignore it, but it absolutely grates my balls, bruh. Do you know how long South African music producers and musicians had to work? Well, music producers and musicians are the same thing, but anyway. Do you know how long South African musicians had to work for our music to get globally recognized as being the shit? Bruh, even before I'm a piano, South African music was the shit is the shit go and listen to our house music that is some of the best music on the motherfucking planet and just when we get some recognition for our musical efforts nigerians want to fucking steal our piano imagine imagine there was even a slim chance that that nigerian lady would have won miss south africa Imagine Nigerian people had that claim that a Nigerian woman won Miss South Africa. They would have never let us sleep on that shit, bro. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have let us rest knowing that a Nigerian was chosen as Miss South Africa. You know what I'm saying? Because the level of disrespect that's happening on social media, bro, unacceptable, bro. Unacceptable, dog. We gave the world I'm a piano. We give the world beautiful women. And I'm glad even though she's an Afrikaans lady, hey, fuck you guys, okay? That's our Afrikaans lady. That's our Miss South Africa. I don't give a fuck what y'all are saying about, yes, South Africans are known for being xenophobic. Hey, fuck you guys, okay? You want to call everything fucking xenophobic, bruh. But then you guys still want to come to our country and fucking exploit us of our resources. Y'all keep talking about South Africans are so colonized. Y'all are fucking coming here illegally. Same as that lady that was in the fucking Miss South Africa competition and using us for our fucking resources. Okay? Everybody always has the most to fucking say about South Africans, dog. Then don't come here. You know what I'm saying? Then just fucking stay away then. Then don't come here. But if you're going to come here, if you're going to use us for our resources, if you're going to use us for our fucking clout on TikTok, shut the fuck up about South Africans, bro. Especially these fucking black Americans, bro. I don't understand how you fucking hypocrites have the most to say from the other side of the world about Africans, but y'all are benefiting directly from a white dominated economy, a white dominated country, a country built by white people. Y'all are directly benefiting from whiteness. 
But y'all have the most to say about South Africa still being enslaved and colonized. Yo, leave us to do our thing. You do your thing. There's that one post that been commenting about South Africans, the South Africans that just stick to making fucking content about blood diamonds and shit. Just do that for yourself, okay? Otherwise, fuck off, bro. We don't need your fucking African-American arrogant opinion about African issues. We will sort things out to the Nigerians here in Africa. As far as the black Americans, fucking stick to your shit, bro. There's a lot of bullshit going on there in the US that you guys have to deal with. Stop fucking commenting on our shit. You know, because it's always some negative shit. It's always some negative ass shit, bro. If you don't have anything fucking positive to contribute to Africa, shut the fuck up, bro. We will sort things out with our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, okay? Yeah, yeah, I said it. Today we have a lot of responding. <clears throat> it's not really easy, but I keep asking ask myself question. When you are in the country, when you see your life is, is in danger. Yes. What were you supposed to do? Return back to your country, simple and ABC. No one drive you. When you see your life is in, if you are in Nigeria and you are in South Africa, and you see your life is in danger, simple, you're returning. Just come back to your home. Don't come out and complain. These people don't like us. They don't need us because you are still there. If you are there, because you are there, that's why they don't like you. You are still there. When you're returning back, you are not there. Nobody going to complain about you. Yeah, that's so it is. Nobody going to complain about you. Although you are watching the respondent. They are a respond. A lot of people are responding to it, listening to it. All the South African people who are out here trying to hate and chase black foreigners. You are the problem because you are working for the colonizer. You don't realize you are the problem in the society. How do you promote hate towards a fellow black man? How do you promote hating a black man because he doesn't have the same ID as you? You must be stupid. You must be ashamed of yourself. The colonizer's plan was to divide and conquer. And right now the colonizer doesn't have to do anything. You are working for him anyway. You are the inside job. You are doing his job, you are doing his bidding by following his plan. Yo, black South African people are actually working for the colonizer, if you think about it. The, the, the supreme. The white Supremes, the Europeans who came here in South Africa or in Africa to segregate and divide black people, they don't have to do anything. Black people bought into the idea that they must hate their fellow brothers because they don't have the same identification card as them. That's so hypocritical. You are hypocrites, you people. You people, you are not warriors. You people are cowards. You people who hate fellow black people. You don't have a wound to you people. There's no way you're going to heaven. You won't go to heaven. You are hating the same person with the same skin color as you, with the same hair as you. How do you do that? How do you do that? Now with xenophobia, okay. What happens after xenophobia? Now will it be tri tribalism. You'll be hating a fellow black man because he's stronger and you're Zulu. You'll be hating a fellow black man because he's closer and you are suit. How stupid are you to do that? You must be so stupid, man, to believe in those ideas. Why do you believe such hypocrisy? What's wrong with our people? Our people, there's something wrong. Our people are cursed or there's, there's something wrong, man, with our people. I swear, I swear our people need a spiritual, they are, they are facing a spiritual warfare. They need a spiritual cleansing right now. South African black people need a spiritual cleansing. Simple. They need God's intervention, man. God must intervene because our people can't be living like this. Our people can't be thinking like this. This can't be how our people think and behave. There's no ways this is how our people think and behave. No ways. No, and then I must be proud to be a South African, living amongst people who behave and think like this. Hi, bo. Hi, bo. Hey, hey. Black South Africans, how are you people feeling now? <laughs> I love
love the white, they know how to treat you people properly. Thank to Miss Essay for giving them who will represent them and their culture. Miss Mia Leroy. Comment ça va aller vous, mon frère? Tu vas manger le pape? <laughs> we need someone that know our culture. We want someone that has our names. And the white was like, okay, since you guys don't like people that look like you, let's do as usual. This is Miss Essay from 2000 to 2024. There has only been three black South African girls as winners. The rest are all white girls. See, here they were crying online about Mpumelela. Why? When we've been at Chirima and I make noise, five petition. When it was Mia that won, people went and cried, cried, and stay quiet. Essay is Rainbow Nation. But the whites don't want to see you people in Orenia. Now, this is live and a joke. <laughs> I am a proudly South African deaf woman, and I know what it feels like to be excluded. But thanks to the Miss South Africa organization, I have a foot in the world of the included. And so, South Africa, of all the noise that you are making, this is what it is about. This, Miss South Africa, all the noise that this one, the black one that you are seeing, guys, South Africans, they rejected this lady from contesting as Miss South Africa because they believe that their problem with the lady is that she stole identity. Meanwhile, the lady is born in South Africa. They say the father is Nigerian, whatever the story is all about. They stole identity, whatever it is, that is their problem. And they disqualify her to the level where the government has to have to even step in South Africa. They rejected this lady, this black lady, because she stole identity. But South Africans don't have problem with the white one who stole the land together with the identity. They don't have problem with that. Between these two, this one is a foreigner. The black one is a foreigner. And the white one is South African. South Africans are becoming the weakest link to Africa. The white one is a citizen. The black one is a foreigner. South Africa. So South Africans rejected the black lady who is able to speak, can hear, can do everything. They swap and then rejected her because she's just black and she stole the identity. They swap her with a white, a foreigner who came and stole the land and she's deaf and cannot speak properly. Listen, I'm not trying to... See, 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 far from that. Far from that. Respect to all the dis disability people. I'm not trying to laugh at disability people. No, 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 no. But <laughs> it doesn't make any sense right now that... South Africans, anyway, I will not go there before this is public uh, platform. Uh, I don't want anybody to say that I'm trying to laugh at dis disabled people. No. So South Africans rejected the black one for this. And the black one is a foreigner to South Africans. And the white one is a citizen to South Africans. This one stole identity and you have problem with it. That one, the white one stole your land together with the identity. You don't have problem with it. How it, it has got into this level, South Africa. I don't want to say anything because these people, they are so emotional. They start insulting you. Hey, bana, hey, bana. I don't want problem. But I just want to know. So the white one is a citizen of South Africa and the black one is a foreigner. I just want to know. Are we serious? Fellow Africans, I mean, does this does it make any sense? These guys who keep disappointing us in Africa. You've got problem with the black one because she stole identity. You have no problem with the white one from stealing the land Together with the identity, that is not your problem. Yo, Miawole Dodi, Aiko, well done. Mm. South Africans, I have a question, and I'm just asking this question for explanation because I need to understand. So, I heard that there is a, a city or a town in South Africa that has its own currency and is predominantly white, uh, Orania, or something like that. My question is this. If somebody from Orania qualifies for the Olympics, are they going to represent South Africa or are they going to represent Orania? Because from what I saw, they're talking about if you want to visit that place, it's almost like you're taking a visa or whatever, something like that. You know, I just want to understand the sports ramifications of this. Do people from Orania play for the South African football team? Do they participate in the, in, in the Olympics for South Africa? uh what is the what is the sports ramifications for this in terms of uh in terms of that just um explanation please explain it to me i want to i want to learn can somebody from orania play for south african national team can somebody from orania represent south africa and at the olympics um and you know all those kind of stuff i just want to know 
state. Why? Because Orania is a whites-only town. Black people cannot live or work here. Every job is reserved for the whites. Every task performed by white people. And yet the residents of this town insist they're not racist. Here's a report. Welcome to Orania, a remote farming town in South Africa's Northern Cape. It prints its own money, runs its own banks, has its own holidays and manages its own affairs. Sounds like the perfect township to relocate, right? Well, hold your horses. To enter Orania, you have to qualify on certain parameters. The foremost is the color of your skin. It has to be white, because Orania is a whites-only town. The uniqueness is too obvious to ignore. Wherever you go in this township, you will only find Afrikaners. White people with Dutch ancestry. They do all the work, from playing the piano at the church... ...to reading out the Bible to believers. To running the kitchen at a restaurant. To even gardening at orchards. All jobs, big or small, are reserved for white people. But the residents of this town insist that they're not racist. We are from Africa, that's why we call ourselves Afrikaners. We want to remain here. We also want to retain our identity. Now, to retain one's identity is not a racist impulse. We wanted to retain our identity against the English or the British uh, imperialism also. And they are even whiter than we are, <laughs> much whiter. Orania is often dubbed as the last outpost of apartheid, a system of institutionalized racial segregation. South Africa abolished apartheid in the 1990s. But the legacy lives... Everyone's asking is, are you a racist town? Rania is not a racist town. It's not a racist idea. But where are the black people? Where's the integration? Well, Rania is a cultural community. Um, uh, Rania is an Afrikaner freedom project. Aren't you deepening the divide by segregating yourself that way? Rania is not deepening the divide. We are, we are working from, from a space where we have the self-confidence to be who we truly are. So if I were to marry a sister of yours, would you be okay with that? You would have to ask her hand for that. And yes, but I mean, the, would your family be okay yeah. with a black person marrying into your family? Uh, is that person a, a Benda or a Koza? Well, or it's a, me. We are not stuck in 1976. There are lots of people who find that if you were to actually run this country again, black people would be oppressed. That is absolute nonsense. Because of what has happened in South Africa, now Uganda coming out started bringing their own. <laughs> you were the person. Listen to the video, then you understand. To be a citizen of Uganda by birth, the following conditions must be met. One, the person may or may not be born in Uganda. Being born uh, in Uganda alone does not make you a citizen of Uganda unless that former condition is made, unless one of the two parents or grandparents is a Ugandan belonging to the indigenous communities of Uganda. Just being born here, for instance, if you are born in Uganda with uh, your mother, non-Ugandan, and your father, non-Ugandan, grandfather, non-Ugandan, grandmother, non-Ugandan, it does not automatically make you a Ugandan. I want that one to be caught very, very clearly. Um, being born out of Uganda does, does not make you a non-Ugandan. If one of the parents is a Ugandan, even if you are born in London, even if you are born in Congo, even if you are born in Kenya, you remain a Ugandan, even if you are born outside Uganda. You will be referred to as a citizen by birth. Citizen by birth. As you can see, the news not end there. Many things is happening in Africa. And why all these things are happening? People are talking. People keep saying, the matter is too much. Okay, watch this video first. <laughs> we'll move on.
with the way things are going in Nigeria today. Person feed the waka for road. Chinese people go just giddy you, carry you, say they don't take you borrow money. <laughs> say your state governor don't take you borrow money or your federal government don't take you borrow money. That's where you go go on the loan where you don't know. And you see governors go take loan. New governor go come in, he go pack the loan aside. He go go take your own loan. <laughs> and you see these loans, nobody they see the details of waiting there inside the loan, waiting then sign, waiting then discuss. The way we they go, then go they give us for road. They collect us. Hey, hey. You stay there. Now the amount where you they owe be this. We go pack one million. You go pack two hundred thousand. Loan where we no know. So secretive. How can government be so? How much loan save do we? How many people are what people countries or people are we owing? We don't know. You just come, take loan. Your predecessor will come. Say no. Forget that one. Make I take my own. Then go they give us for road now. They carry us. So yeah, you don't owe. Oh yeah, follow me. <laughs> Look, the only time Nigerians are united. All Nigerians come together is if they want to insult someone who is not a Nigerian. Apart from that, they are never united in anything. They never agree on anything. We were here when um, South Africans came out and said they don't want Chidima to you know, participate in the Miss South Africa because she's not a full South African and a whole lot of things. And Nigerians came out in their roofs. Hey, South Africans are xenophobic. They are still slaves. They are this. They are that. Why should they treat Chidima like that? You know, you, you, you all know the story. You all know how Nigerians were bashing South Africans for not allowing Chidima to take part in Miss South Africa. So Chidima had to withdraw from the pageant because the pressure was too much. And now, <laughs> she has been invited to take part in the Miss Nigeria one. Yes, so she has been invited and she accepted. And now, guess what? Nigerians are divided. Like, they are going back and forth on Twitter. Some are saying that she does not deserve it and that she has manipulated her way. Some are saying she's here because of sympathy. Some are saying at least she's a Nigerian. Like, they are, they, they are not agreeing on one thing. Even that the activist, is a very black man, that, that, that tick guy, yes. He even came out to say he's not in support of Chidima taking part in this pageant. So now Nigerians are being Afrophobic, yes. Some are even saying they cannot accept the South African reject. <laughs> you see, as you are bashing South Africa, you guys cannot even accept Chidima to participate in your pageant. But you have the moral right to be bashing South Africa. Guys, you have heard a lot of South Africans say that Nigerians have come into their country and they've taken their jobs. Some complain that the Nigerians have invaded their spaces and they have taken their customers away. Today, I want to share with you how Nigerians influenced the petty trading business in Ghana. Ghanaians are very interesting people when it comes to marketing. Yes, Ghanaians are driven by their account saying that Adepan Etoneho, which means that quality bees don't rattle. Quality stop market themselves. And so what Ghanaians loved to do in the past, and some people still do this, is to create artificial scarcity. Most Ghanaians loved to hoard their produce until the price goes up, then they sell. With this, Ghanaian businessmen or Ghanaian petty traders were fond of disrespecting their customers until the Nigerians set in. Let me give you a critical example. Back in 2002-2003, I was in senior high school and that was when mobile phones were, you know, the order of the day. It was, you know, amazing to see flashy, silver-looking, sleek mobile phones. And Ghanaians were the ones that started selling phones on the streets in sieves, you know, glass sieves, by the roadside. Woe betides you if you walk to a Ghanaian phone dealer to ask of the prices of phones or charges etc and then you do not buy they get very angry and they warn you not to come to their stores again they warn you not to come to waste their time when you're not ready to buy this was the order of the day until the nigerians came into the business what did they do nigerians do not wait nigerians do not wait for you to come to them to come and buy the nigerians now sit by the roadside they get outside their shops and when you are passing they force you to enter their shops to buy yes that's what they were doing that's a the strategy they used they do not believe in hoarding until the price goes up before they come to sell look in certain markets in ghana to this day you cannot buy tomatoes from one market and bring it to another market 
there are certain markets in Ghana that you cannot bring onions on particular days. You cannot bring tomatoes on particular days. Yes, they practice hoarding. They create artificial scarcity so that the prices go up. When it comes to our Nigerian counterparts, they have one principle. The money in your pocket is what they are interested in. And so they will use any means necessary to get that money. Even if it means a total stranger will walk and, how do you call it, man the shop of another Nigerian and he will keep quiet and step aside for him to behave as if the shop is his, is his own shop so that both of them can make money. Nigerians when they came they brought a lot of mobile phones into the system and they were selling it at affordable prices. They do not care about the profit margin. Even when the profit margin is little and they are able to sell more, they make more money than their Ghanaian counterparts who were always fixated on a particular profit margin. When a Ghanaian is selling something, I want to make $30 on this shirt. That is it. Whether, whether you have 29.99999, most Ghanaians back there will not sell it to you. And the interesting thing is that a lot of us started learning from the Nigerians. And today, when you go into the market, they are rubbing shoulders with each other. Many people came out to say that, look, instead of fighting these people, let us learn from them. Let us learn from them. And today, at the petty trading level, we are rubbing shoulders with them and they have influenced the business. Yesterday, I went to buy a mobile phone charger for my wife and I told the guy I wanted Orimo. He wanted to sell me an Infinix charger, a Ghanaian, of course. I told him, look, it is Orimo I want. So he left his store, ran to another place to go and look for the Orimo charger for me. This is something that would never have happened in the past. But today, some of these things have changed because the Nigerians came into the business and they changed the business. So instead of chasing them out of your country, instead of molesting them, instead of analyzing them on the streets, learn their ways, love them and live with them harmoniously and then let us learn from each other. At the end of the day, we are all one people. We are all one black people. We are all one Africa and Africa must unite because in unity lies our strength. As you can see, we all Africans, we are all confused now. <laughs> now we don't know who is speaking the truth or the like. We are all confused. But that one is not ended. There are a lot of news in the house when I'll be bringing to you. But listen to the audio voice. Then we conclude this for today. Um, another day, you'll be expecting a lot of things that is happening in Africa. Hello, Mr. Manager. How are you? I hope you are fine. Uh, I told you to send me your number. You don't want to to meet go together. I will find you. Don't worry. You know, um, Mr. Niji, Mr. Naja, that guy called Jimmy or something like that. From today, I've stopped even worrying myself about him. Just so stop it. And then I find out that he's not a Nigerian. Is is Cameroon? He's a Cameroonian, and then he married Nigeria, so that's why he put himself of him to talk about uh, what do you call it, Cameroon or something like that. He will come because of his uh, he, he, his wife was Nigeria, so he pre, he always making that he's a Nigeria. So I saw because I find out that he doesn't have sense. So last time, the last video he was doing that. He found he found out that uh, South Africa, the Gan uh, the Nigerians are there. They are not many. Even Ghana, the Nigerians are Ghana. They are not many. Why Ghana are making mouth say everywhere Nigerians uh, or there? And then I reply him that even though they are thin, there's a Nigerians. But if they are here, they are quietly doing their job very good. Who is going to complain about them? And the Ghanaians are Nigeria. Many then I was asking is the Nigerians. The Ghanaians and Nigerians, I did do clams, I did do arm robbing, I did do uh, money rituals, I did do uh, all this what the Nigerians are doing here. They are not doing that. Then nobody hear them. But even though the Nigeria is 10, 10 people in here, and then they are doing, they are, uh, two or three are doing bad or four are doing bad. They will say the Nigerians, you understand? Not all of them are here are doing bad things many people are doing their good job many people are doing nicely many people living good but those people coming here are not working they are the ones spoiling the other ones you know then that's why people they say the poor all the nigerians you know are no good or something like that um and then 
Number two, there's one guy from Libya. He was saying something that the Nigerians, uh, women, you don't want them to friend in Ghana women or something like that. Uh, Mr. Nigeria, you are in Ghana here. Okay? Find out very well. The Ghanaians are here. They don't love the Ghanaians men. Do you know that, that? They love the Nigerians guys. In my area, the Nigerian guys are there. They are giving all those guys pregnant. I can count to about six or seven guests. All of them, their boyfriend are Nigerians, and they give them pregnancy. Can you imagine what this guy was saying? That uh, I was so happy that the guy, the girl, replied him because the, that boy, that guy doesn't have sense. You know, this this not something you have to bring it for the media and saying it. How? If you are doing them good, are they come to talk? Or are they going to friend the Ghana woman or uh, the Nigerian uh, Ghana men? Because these people are not doing them good. You carry a woman from Nigeria to go to Lib Libya. You, a man, you are not working. You put the woman with a hotel. Whatever the woman is collect uh, collecting, fucking himself, sorry to say that, then you are collecting the money for your pocket. And then you come to stay in the media and saying all these things that the Nigerian get no friend, the Ghana men, the Ghana men are useless, the Ghana men are. Just, come on, the Nigerian guys are here in Ghana. Find out if you see Mr. Niger, Mr. Naja, you are here. Find out. Most most of the guests, if you are friend them, they love the Nigerian guys past Ghana boys. What about that one? Are they? We are, we are complaining. No, any Ghana person is complaining about that. But why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? You know, most of your people, they doesn't have, they were always claiming they have sense, but some of them doesn't have common sense. Some of them doesn't have common sense. They will just come and say, see somebody like this, uh, uh, Jimmy, where are we? I'm complaining. From today always, I'm not going to even to talk about him because he's not a Nigerian. He's not a Nigerian, so I'm not going to talk about anything about him again. And I found out that somebody told me, I found out that he's not a Nigerian. He's from Cameroon, and he married Ghana, he married a Nigerian woman. You know, that's why. So that's why I stopped. I don't worry myself. It's not the soul of Nigeria. It's not the son of Nigeria. Okay? That because if marry Nigeria, you are claiming that you are a Nigeria, uh, you are a Nigeria man, and you are not. Not only you are a foreigner, you are talking nonsense. I'm not blaming him. If you are a foreigner and you are talking, I was thinking he's a Nigerian. And so he married, he married a Nigerian person, and maybe he married say Igbo. You know, if they come like that, they will go and stay Igbo like or Karaba, and they will hear the language. And they will claim that they are they, they are from they are from Nigeria. So that all of them are doing. The Chad people, the Cameroonians, the Niger people, they will come to Nigeria and stay there, speak very well. Also, those when they are Karaba side, they will speak Karaba. Those when they are Igbo side, they will speak the Igbo. But you find out that they are Igbo people or something like that. So I'm not blaming him. I'm from today always. I'm not going to even if, if he wants. If he carry Ghana to his head. And insult Ghana for Inyash. I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk anything because he's not a Nigerian. He's a fool. You know, he's not a Nigerian, so I'm not going to talk. I was thinking he's a Nigerian. I'm sorry, he's, he's, he's a foreigner. Nonsense. Banza. Mr. Naji, Mr. Naja, thank you so much. Eh? Uh, what about my promise? So when are we, when are we going to meet? Thank you. Yes, this guy said, uh, money don't hide, my friend. No billionaire can hide his money. Before you become a billionaire, you must have some visible investment. Yes, it is true, but I don't know that only in Nigeria, a rich man is not known. The rich man have to do something for the people to know he, he or she is rich. Like somebody like Mike Adenuga, he go build very huge house, that one I ate it. Only one house, you have more than 20 houses inside there. So that people will not say he's rich, you understand? But here in Ghana, people don't do those kind of things to 
even rich people in Ghana, they don't want people to know they are rich. But in Nigeria, you will see people doing giveaways. Like, I've been seeing these guys on social media. You see, like, somebody will go on the street trying to share money to people. People will be jumping, like... In Ghana, they share money, but they don't put camera on them when they are sharing money to people. In Nigeria, when you are sharing money, you have to uh, set a camera on yourself for people to know you are doing good. It seems like there, there are some differences in these two countries. Like, in Nigeria, everything you do, you must have a receipt. You understand? When you are rich, you must create a receipt for yourself. People must know you are rich. Hmm? When you are going to share money, when you are going to do good, you have to put camera on yourself so people will know, say, you do good to the people. But in Ghana, when we help, we don't need a receipt. You understand? We don't need people to know we are happy. Ghana, rich person in Ghana, know the... They the fear. There is some, somebody here in Ghana. Hmm? There is one company in Ghana, they call them, I think, Pharma Trust. For me, I have been seeing their buildings. Did they build like they are mad? Did they build skyscrapers? Did they build anyhow? That man, if you buy land like this, you will build them. Within three months, you will see a heavy building there. Nobody say, but you know, go know the owner. But if in Nigeria, you will know the owner of that kind of things. You understand? In Ghana, people will get big, big companies. The owners, they are hiding. I don't know if did they hide the money or would it be their problem, but in Nigeria, a rich man must be known. If you start to see billions, whether you like it or not, you must start to shout. I don't know. You know, every country get their own culture now. And that, that's the difference. More billionaires are in Ghana, but they don't talk. You know, you see, no, you say Dangote get money where well, people they talk, but I can tell you that there's somebody in Ghana who get money past Dangote. Whether you like it or not, person in Ghana will get money past Dangote. But that, that kind of, but they don't go talk. Even if they have money, they don't, they don't really like to make them, they rank them. You see Ghana people, you see rich person in Ghana, you will see, you go, they beg you. If you step on them, you go, you will say, oh, sorry, my brother. <coughs> they don't really like they use convoy. In Ghana, before you go see convoy, that's a police head officer or a, a politician or, governor. yes, it's very, like governor. Like, <laughs> like governor, you see, before you will see, a convoy. Like, you don't go see, say, convoy, they come, you go see the normal person, say, now, rich person, no, they stay for here. No, 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 no. They are not here. Rich people, they know they do convoy. No, 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 no. You know they happen like that. Before you go see convoy, a politician or a president, MP, governor or senator, now you they come, before you go see convoy in Ghana. But for Nigeria, convoy, they everywhere. Like me, like this, I say, I get money for Nigeria, I go just go take convoy like this. I go, they shout, people go, they see, say, and I mean, they come. Mm -hmm. We need receipts. Nigerian people need receipts for everything they do. <laughs> a lot of things and a lot of drama and a lot of things is happening in this Africa. And you keep asking yourself this kind of question. Is the African coming to end today? No, it's not going to end. Just that we are all confused. <laughs> South Africa with white people claiming some part in Africa in their country, which is that kind of thing cannot happen in this West African cannot happen, cannot even happen, especially Ghana or Nigeria. It cannot happen, but it happened in South Africa. And the same South African no like their fellow black brothers. It's how the thing go. But no be say Nigerians say they get their own problem. Well, let's be honest. Nigerians, they are the most problem. We have our problem, okay? I don't need to talk so that you know come and you know, but today I just want to appreciate everybody. In case if you want to reach out to me, look at my bio. My WhatsApp number is there. What do you have to share with me? We are waiting for you. And as for now, for now, right now, as for now, right now, I go end everything here and I just want to say, say bye bye. God bless you for the supporting, the like, the comment, the share, the subscribe. Thank you. But don't forget to subscribe and bye bye for now. See me in my next video. Bye bye.